I do want to talk about what you can and cannot do at a polling location. You're, you know, you're psychic. Have you been like, uh, you should open up a psychic hotline because you know? I was just about to say something about that, but you, you said yeah, words again so perfectly. Yeah, so we've seen lots that. of things. So like you have to, you already mentioned, you have to bring a photo ID or if you are not in possession of a photo ID, you have to sign in affidavit. affidavit. So yes. that's on your application to vote. Uh, another myth is that if you um, don't have your ID with you that you can't vote. That is not true. Michigan did make it very easy to vote. You just have to turn over the application to vote, which is a little form that we all fill out when you come in with your name, address, and date of birth. That's mm -hmm. it. That's when you show your, you show your photo ID okay. and you go, uh oh, I don't have my photo ID with me. So uh, there's a number of options here. The first option you can say is, I didn't bring my photo ID. The election inspector will tell you to turn the, the application over and just simply sign saying, I have a valid ID, I'm just not in possession of it. You sign it, and guess what? You're good to vote. Everything is okay. fine. No problem. Now, let's say somebody says, I don't have, an, I don't have my ID with me, but I'm not going to sign that affidavit. I just don't believe in it. And we have people that have these types of beliefs. Then we say, that's fine. It's your option, but you're not allowed to vote. And then they would contact the clerk's office if they had problems mm -hmm. with that um, understanding of the law. Some people say, I don't have to show my ID. It's my constitutional right. The people feel that they can interpret the state constitution or the federal constitution and that they are experts and they know what, they, what to do or what they can't do. Unfortunately, their interpretation does not jive with state and federal law. And so if a person chooses to not show an ID and then they refuse to sign an affidavit, then they cannot vote again. So the, the key is there's an option, but they have to be willing to sign the affidavit. If they don't do that, they don't get an opportunity to vote. Okay. And I saw Justin Timberlake took a selfie when he voted in Tennessee, which yes. is against the law, correct? So that flip-flopped several times in the last couple of weeks. Um, it, uh, it, there was, uh, uh, the, it had changed back and forth. Mm -hmm. The bottom line now is it is not legal to take a selfie in the polling location. We do not uh, 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 have people taking photos. We don't want it, people to feel intimidated. It's supposed to be a secure mm -hmm. uh, act, a civic engagement that privacy is paramount. Uh, the media is allowed to come in and take general pictures of an election, of a polling location, but individuals should refrain from using their cell phone. They are allowed to talk on the phone, but because of noise issues, we ask they keep their voices down. Okay. And you are not allowed to use your cell phone in your polling uh, when you're actually voting. Okay. That's another thing to keep in mind when you come into the polling location. Do not wear any shirts that have uh, political messages, mm -hmm. uh, candidate uh, statements on them. Do not wear buttons or caps that refer to candidates on the ballot. And so a no campaign material. No campaign, and you're not allowed, no one is allowed to, to discuss anything related to the election in line when you're waiting to vote or inside the polling location. That means First Amendment rights are still protected. Individuals can talk about politics in general, but if anything relates, feasibly or even sort of indirectly to something on the ballot, an election inspector um, is likely to come over and politely ask a citizen to refrain from that kind of conversation. For, and let me give some examples. You can say, wow, um, it, boy, uh, elections in America just, this is really, um, I can't stand this. I hate the process. I hate all those stupid political ads I see. I just can't stand this. I can't wait till it's over. We all hear that. Right. That's actually okay. That's not going to affect anybody how they, vote. how they vote. Now, somebody else is in line and says, boy, I just can't wait for President Obama to be out of office. For that, Maybe they're just coming. Or I love President Obama. I wish we could have a third term for him. That is reasonably interpreted as affecting the presidential race between the two candidates. Cannot make, cannot comment on that. And that would seem, to most people, that would seem reasonable. So election workers during training are given some discretion. Do, is the conversation reasonably going to affect a person, a person who, an ordinary person hearing this, might think that it somehow relates to the current candidates or proposals that are on the ballot? And that's the litmus test as to whether or not the, the conversation is permitted or not. Okay, and what if a voter in line hears something and they're either offended or they think it's not allowed? Can they go to an election inspector yes. and say something? Yes, we encourage that. They can okay. go to an election inspector. Go to the, We have a help desk that's staffed by our chairperson. They're the most knowledgeable people. <laughs> and they would tell that person. That person would then go to that individual and, and see. Maybe they haven't said anything more. Um, depends on what had been said or how long okay. it's going on. And then, um, so no campaign materials, but what if you what, took notes? 
You can take notes, you, you, can, can, you can bring, in, bring, notes you can in, bring in your iPad, you can bring your phone in and have all your notes on your phone. Uh, you can bring in all the campaign material you want. You can bring in a loose leaf binder with tons of stuff. Oh, you just can't leave it or try to you know what's campaign. funny? You know what's funny, Brandy? Ac some, some, some people accidentally leave their campaign literature <laughs> behind. I don't understand why they do that. Could you, could you figure out why they might do that? So that they can try to sway the next Maybe voter? the next person yes. might just happen to see that brochure laying there. So election inspectors routinely go to each of the privacy, behind the privacy screens and we gather up the extraneous material that's left behind. Another related rule is for people who might be on a campaign, there's a lot of people that are very actively campaigning right now. Mm -hmm. You have to stay 100 feet away from the entrance to the polling location. You can stay 20 feet away as an exit pollster, and you can you you can you can 20 feet away ask people after they came out how they voted. See, but, we do that here at Home TV, but we have to have them away from the exit. You can't ask people when they come in unless exactly. they're 100 feet away. But you should wait until after. And we measure that. We have a hundred foot string that we use. It's measured, and we don't just wing it. So we have it precise. And in 2012, I I had the unfortunate task of having to deal with a candidate who did not want to um, follow that rule, and we had to actually file a campaign violation after the okay, fact, and they wow. lost the election. Bad karma, too. <laughs> so. Anything else you want to let people know about what they can or cannot do at the polls, or um, what if they, like, spoil their ticket <coughs> and accident? Like, what, what is that? Um, so if a voter makes a mistake, we can, what's, we can spoil a ballot, ballot which means yeah. that we invalidate that ballot, and we simply issue them a new ballot. Okay. So there's no worries. If somebody goes and makes a mistake, you can speak to an, an election inspector and explain that. An election inspector cannot examine your ballot. Okay. So don't bring your, we've had voters, in fact, in our township hall, pull it up and go, look, I made this mark here, and they're sh holding up their ballot. And I quickly try to grab a privacy screen, or I, I go, no, don't show it. It's <laughs> kind of comical. It's almost like a cartoon, <laughs> jumping over the counter. No, co cover it up. And then um, I said, please explain to me you know, what you think you did. What, and then they explained, I said, oh, I have a mark there. And so then we may say, okay, we'll just spoil the ballot, we'll issue a new one. Okay. If, an, if a person did that with an absentee ballot, we duplicate the ballot as part of that process in that sequestered room. Mm. So if we get a ballot and it looks like, if we can clearly determine voter intent, we can do it. If, it's, if, it, if they made some what might be called a fatal error like overvoted and some other things where they oh, did we right. can't determine then that particular race would be um, invalid for example it doesn't mean the entire ballots invalid it's another Just thing to keep in mind one. right ballots are not completely invalidated uh, you have it's individual races that are typically what are what are invalidated you overvote extra extraneous marks and things like that well thank you again Brett and don't forget to watch home TV's live general election night coverage on Tuesday November 8th for up-to-the-minute results as the ballots are counted, we'll begin at 8 p.m. I'm Brandi Yates. Thanks for watching.